Hey, you know that little slice of misogyny that masks itself in a sloppy worn out t-shirt that says social commentary on the front scrolled in with Sharpie? The one that likes to call women liars for tricking you about how they really look because they spend all day every day in deceptive cosmetics. Let's have a sprawling chat about makeup, shall we? I know, right? A tubby greybeard Gen X cis boy nerd who clearly has no fashion sense, a low care factor about his personal vanity, past look tidy enough not to draw attention unnecessarily, making a whole ass video about the most superficial and pervasive vanity industry on the planet. What insight could I possibly have about all this? It's a fair question, really. I don't know. I could be way off base with this stuff, I might be making a complete clown show of myself, but makeup and cosmetics have been on my mind for the past few days. Hello again, I am Blunty, and I've personally worn makeup exactly twice in my whole life. Once when I was in a stage musical in college, and once when I did a promotional photo shoot with MSI, who were a sponsor at the time. Hopefully I can find the, the, the photo of that so when I go ding it can, it can be there instead of a blank space. Otherwise awkward. And I'll warn you right up front, this video is a bit of a cluster of different thoughts and stories and it doesn't really have a singular strong point on which to balance it from. So there's not going to be a message here necessarily, just some thoughts. So why has makeup been bouncing around inside my skull anyway? It, it's, it's one of those little chain of coincidence things. Firstly, last week, I went through a whole bunch of Finster's YouTube stuff, a second screen content kind of thing, while I was pottering away on other stuff because he's an entertaining little bugger. If you don't know Finster, short version is Minecraft YouTuber who, through a series of steps along the way, started cross-dressing more and more often on his streams. Partly in parody of the e-girl stuff that people get all wound up about on Twitch and whatnot, and partly because, well, he genuinely enjoys it, and frankly, he does it really, really remarkably well. Cute, right? So there's that. A lot of his content includes at least some talk about makeup and related cosmetics and false eyelashes and hair extensions and contouring tricks to optical illusion stuff to change the way his face is shaped and, you know, even right down to fake bobs. Then... On the weekend, I was watching the televised stream of the Sydney Mardi Gras, one of the world's biggest and oldest LGBTQIA parades in the entire world. It started about 44 years ago as a protest march right here in Sydney and just got bigger and better from then on in. So, of course, with that many non-straights on parade on my screen and the whole point of the march being, nope, you cannot ignore this, just try. You can probably imagine there were very few in the parade without cosmetic adorations of some kind, with most being extreme flamboyance, including one of the TV hosts, Courtney, in drag. Now, this one stood out to me because personally I'm not usually a fan of the wildly exaggerated aesthetic of the drag queen style makeup. I found it all a bit overwhelming. It might be an autistic thing, you know, just this is too much, too much to process. I don't know. But that said, I also personally think uh, uh, the purpose and intent and act of drag is wonderful and has inarguably been a vital ingredient in the progress of queer rights, recognition, perception, because they are, by design, impossible to ignore. So hooray drag queens, and drag queens for that matter. But Courtney's makeup in particular stuck in my mind because I really liked it and I thought they looked amazing and I don't normally really like drag queen makeup, like I just said. And then, just last night, I watched a video from a trans YouTuber named Ash, whose videos were some of the very first I watched a big fistful of years back when I was actively trying to learn more about the trans stuff from trans people directly, uh, because while I never had any anti-trans sentiments in me, uh, I was pretty ignorant about a lot of it. So, to become a better ally, to be a better queer, and because frankly I really just love learning new things, I dove in on Ash's content and others. Ash, in particular, was very charismatic, spoke thoughtfully, clearly, uh, with enough bright joy, and occasionally slapped in with some no edge of dark humor. I found their general presentation style extremely compelling. Very, very easy to watch and delightful. Frankly, I think I might have a little crush on them. Just, just a little one. With their new video, one that brings them back to YouTube after about two and a half years away, an absence at least partially caused by the kinds of brutally overwhelming harassment only going viral as a creator can bring to you, especially if you are divergent in some way. 
You should watch the video, by the way. I'll link it in the down below, of course. Some really interesting insights in there. You might learn something important. But for the context of this video, it was their makeup for several of the shots. Again, personally, I've always historically found more subtle use of makeup to be more my own aesthetic, uh, both socially and with the people I've been in romances with. I appreciate a more subtle look in general. But like with Courtney, I found Ash's what should we call it? I don't know the right makeup fashion words. <laughs> Amplified, expressive, elaborate. Let's go with elaborate. <laughs> Whatever the right word is, you know what I mean. I was a bit enchanted by it anyway. What struck me was where usually this kind of exaggerated cosmetic look is distracting to me. Again, autism brain things might be a bit of a sensory filtering issue. But with Ash, it wasn't distracting me this time around from being able to hear what they were actually saying. So that was unusual for me too. Is my personal aesthetic starting to shift? Was it just coincidence? Was it just that particular style? Was it a new twist on that kind of elaborate makeup that sort of, you know, I, I don't know enough about to notice the shift in it, but has something changed that makes it more pleasant for me to look at now than what it was? I honestly don't know. But with those three makeup rated oddities all cropping up within a few days of one another, well, the way my brain tends to work is when it picks up on patterns like this, coincidences like this, it just kind of I latch onto it, and I've learned from experience that if I don't address it somehow, well, while I'm not prone to OCD proper, I can see the shoreline of compulsive behavior from my brain's bedroom, and my autism brain can do a fair impression of OCD-like behavior sometimes. Also, while we're on it, stop joking about OCD when what you mean is you're a bit fastidious about shit being tidy or organized or whatever, because that's not OCD, and people who deal with real OCD need more understanding from you than that, because it can be a friggin' life-kicking nightmare. I personally know someone with OCD, so, hmm. Anyway, so here we are, past the preamble and the setup. Oh, but there is one more thing. After watching a whole bunch of Finsters videos in a row, it balked up the YouTube algorithm that serves me advertising, uh, so it started to feed me ads for things like sports bras and, yes, cosmetics. Probably use a sports bra. If you've made it this... I don't do sports, I don't need a sports bra. If you made it this far... <laughs> derailed. If you've made it this far, I'll now invite you to leave a comment about the kind of makeup that you personally like on others or on yourself. What do you like on others? And, and what do you wear yourself, if you wear it at all? How often and how complex do you get? Have you ever thought about it and not done it yet? What do you want to try? What do you want to be bold and try? I don't know. I've blushed over, hey, see what I did there? I've blushed over what my personal tastes are already. I tend to find, historically, the minimal and subtle stuff more pleasant. And quite frankly, I find the whole multi-layer, heavily contoured, plastic face look. And please, if this style has a proper name, let me know in the down below. But this, this, I find it kind of horrific and off-putting. Almost like an Uncanny Valley video game face kind of deal. I, I don't like it. It just looks unpleasant and creepy to me. That said, I don't mock, judge, or belittle people who do choose this style for their personal look because it is their personal expression. And just because I have somewhat a visceral reaction to it doesn't mean I have to judge them for it or mock them for it or tease them for it, and nor should you, of course. But this is, of course, the style in particular that is most often targeted and attracts the most comments like I opened up with, like about being deceptive with jokes about how women complain about men being liars and then they wear stuff like this, which is a lie about how they look. And jokes about waking up to someone who looks totally different in the morning. Uh, jokes about chiseling their face off in, in, you know, at the end of the day and, and being afraid to smile in case it cracks and flakes off. You know, you know that kind of stupid stuff. It's one joke told seven different ways. Media sites and social media going nuts over a photo of some actor caught being a person out in the world with their, you know, taking their trash out or something without their makeup on! Like it's some kind of expose scandal about how they, they actually aren't the flawless beauty you see on screen. Like that's some sort of sane reaction that people ex expected of them. We know they're made up and they have filters and, and, and there's video editing and, and, and touch-ups and things like that. We're not idiots. But being a shitty paparazzi and trying to get a photo of them just going about their personal life just because they're not wearing any makeup is a pretty shitty and invasive thing to do to a person. Bugger off with that. And if you're the type of person who engages with this kind of celebrity gossip, might be time to rethink your priorities. 
But yeah, I do find it sort of mean-spirited and awful and kind of toxic and, of course, misogynistic. Kind of even worse misogyny somehow when women do it to other women because chances are they already know how much time and effort and works it takes and how shitty it feels being judged for your looks if you don't jump through those hoops of social conditioning of women being expected to be made up. But that heavy makeup style is also one social signal for me that chances are, given the dedication to vanity and surface level presentation, it's unlikely me and them will have a lot in common, so it's extremely unlikely I'll even try to engage with them socially. But the same is true for someone decked out in sports paraphernalia. I find it real hard to give a toss about sports, so if someone so into sports that they, they buy and wear merchandise from their favourite sports ball team or wear their own personal fitness costumery as casual attire, well, it's a signal to me that I might find it hard to easily find some common conversational ground with that person. And I know someone out there is about to pluck up the old, don't judge a book by its cover. I know someone who goes to the gym all the time, but they also play Warcraft on the weekends. It's a classic, but that's what book covers are for, you silly little buggers. The title, the author's name, the art on the front and the backside blurb are all there on the cover to help you get a first impression of the content of that book. It won't tell you everything you need to know about the book, of course, you have to read it to do that. But if I pick up a book like this, I can feel pretty safe in assuming I probably won't enjoy the read. And if I see this name, I can be pretty sure it will be one of the most wonderful things I've ever seen organized into a stack of words printed onto paper. So cosmetics, like how we dress, is just one of many social signals we choose for ourselves. It's a social construct. Most of us present ourselves in ways that signal to others something about ourselves, how we want to be perceived. The gym junkie who wears those weird vented stretch pants while out in the street with normal people is telling us all, I am focused on my physical fitness. I enjoy the gyms. A nerd who wears a relatively obscure comic book superhero logo on their t-shirt is signaling to others in the know that they're not just another fake superhero nerd who only knows about Hawkeye at all because of the movies. This part of the video probably would have hit a bit harder if I had, man had managed to find the t-shirt I wanted to wear for this video. I couldn't find it. I've had the damn thing for like 20, 30 years or something, so it might have fallen apart and I've thrown it away by now. But I used to have a Mad Men t-shirt. The logo looks like this. Brilliant comic series, but fairly obscure uh, as far as surface level nerdery goes. You have to be properly into comics to know about Mad Men uh, and, and, and Mike Allred and things like that. Although you might be familiar with some of Mike Allred's art because he has done some other more mainstream stuff from time to time. But, yeah. but you know, a fake nerd, a surface level nerd, someone not nerdy enough might mistake that logo for Shazam for example, who, uh, while relatively obscure, at least until the movie came out, more people knew about that because it was part of the big DC lineup, of course, or they might have confused it with Mage, for example. Um, it'd be real nice if that series ever got finished, by the way. But anyway, sidetrack. That was, that was one of my social signals when, when I was in my 20s, hanging out with other nerds. I, w I always got real smug when someone picked it wrong. Oh, it was Shazam t-shirt. No, fake nerd. This happens to be a madman. Have you never heard of Mike Allward? I heard about him before he was popular. Anyway, back to the top of makeup. While makeup isn't as specific as that kind of stuff, it's just as much a social signal. This is my aesthetic, this is my style. Gentle, severe, aggressive, provocative, quiet, vain and style obsessed, or, or just enjoys feeling cute. Maybe it's just, well, I like how my eyes look when I do it like this. I'm, I'm proud of my pouty lips or something. Makeup and styles and fashions change over time, of course, like clothing and new technologies come along and new implementations of old technologies come along and all that sort of stuff. So makeup sort of changes over time as well. Back in the 90s, the girls who wore obvious makeup in my high school would, would go with the style at the time, which was like that, that super smoky, I think they call it, the, the raccoon eye thing, which I did kind of like, and, and also a kind of clumpy, super defined, I've only got five big fat eyelash kind of thing, which I hated, and that super shiny lip gloss thing, which I also hated. Why are your lips so wet? You can't just ask someone why their lips are so wet, Nate. So moist. These days, again, from my position of relative ignorance, it seems like that whole swoopy cat eye thing is, is more the default, which I also quite like. Uh, as a younger lad, my own eyelashes were relatively long and lush for a bloke anyway, and I was frequently told I had nice eyes, uh, which is a compliment I appreciated getting. But as any guy with similar experiences would undoubtedly know, it will lead to your female friends begging to put eyeliner and mascara on you. 
I've got a bit of an issue with people invading my personal space that closely, especially around my face. So past the internalized toxic masculinity that was uh, still unconfronted in me when I was that young uh, and the general homophobia I heard around me from the other boys at school and things like that, which at the time I, I really wish I confronted more. I just kind of let it slide and just felt, Ugh. but anyway, I wasn't eager for the experience of being made up. I did let one girl paint my nails once and I removed it before the day was out because it was very distracting every time I looked down at my hands. It was very weird to see when you had never worn make, uh, nail polish before you looked down and you go, ah! But, you know, and also, fuck explaining it to my family who already considered me the black sheep uh, when I went home at the end of that day. So, anyway, like I spoke about in the video last week, head down, go unnoticed as much as possible, don't stand out, and yeah, makeup or uh, nail polish would have made me stand out. I've considered makeup a few times over the years. I'm on camera quite frequently, and some days my skin looks worse than usual, and sometimes I'm a bit sweater than usual because warm and muggy today. I do moisturize, but I'm also 43 now and have never had a skincare routine. I've only been moisturizing for a few years. It was when I got better and better cameras that started to make my skin look worse and worse because the detail looks better, and I got a little bit vain about it. And while I try hard to avoid indulging in vanity because it always makes me feel weird when I do, uh, like like I paid for a proper haircut a few times at a fancy place and, and or, or I have to get dressed up nice or something like that. I used to dye my hair, not really out of vanity of the greys, but I've actually had those coming in since my early 20s, but my, my bio dad was silver by, by his late 20s, so it's just his genes. But in my 30s, the grey was coming in a bit lopsided and, and weird and it bothered me, so I dyed it for a while and I kind of went out of my way to choose uh, colors that were obviously not my natural color. My thinking was, if I try too hard to look natural, that's, that's some petty vanity sneaking in and someone might call you out on it because I'm not hiding the grains because of vanity. I would just like them to be in, to come in more even because I like the, the, how that looks better. And it's weird logic, I know. And I knew it, it was weird logic then. I don't know, me and vanity have a weird relationship with one another. The beard I've had in various styles and thanks since I was like 16 or 17, partly because I have sensitive skin and always hated shaving, especially the moustache and chin area. So I've always had at least the goatee and Van Dyke kind of deal. And partly because without it, I have a big round potato face most of the time, uh, particularly when I'm a little bit heavier than usual. And I kind of just like how it makes me look, oh, vanity, no. And for this video, the thought crossed my mind to go out and get some eyeliner or something just for thematics sake, but then I'd probably look real bad as I have no idea how to apply eyeliner and maybe it'd be too distracting for the regulars just having bad eyeliner. Even if I did it well, it might be distracting for the regulars who are not used to seeing my eyes pop like fireworks. I also had mild anxiety crank when I did that MSI photo shoot and the makeup girl came at me with those eyelash curler tong things. Why is there not a less monstrously intimidating device designed for curling eyelashes yet? It looks like a device used in surgery. It was horrifying. Someone coming at you with that. Have you heard that happen? I don't like it. Maybe tense up big. But I don't know, given that, I don't know if trying to do my own eyes would make me freak out like that. Shrug. Makeup is weird and I have a weird relationship with it on other people, let alone myself. Maybe I should paint my nails again though. I'll tell you that, for the past two years, that Sydney uh, Mardi Gras has been closed off, ticketed only event because of the event. But next year, they're hoping to go back to the streets where it started and always has been until two years ago and where it really belongs. And I really would like to go along with my camera. So many spectacular people in spectacular costumes and so much makeup and so much joy on people's faces. I want to take photos of that. I always talk myself out of it because the crowds, the noise and the lights and all the chaotic movement and colors and stuff might be pretty overwhelming for the old autism brain, but I want to go. And I feel like if I was ever going to indulge in the vanity of the expressive theatrical cosmetics, that would be a fun way to do it by taking my camera and shooting the march while in I don't know, sparkly eye stuff or something, I don't know. But then also, I'm not young and handsome and fit and my, and my face, while I don't think I'm a fuggo, I'm not sure it's a great canvas to work on. Would a guy like me look too weird in fancy, fancy makeup? <laughs> I don't know. Cosmetics are weird, guys. I think that's all I wanted to say. I just, like I said, there was some bizarre coincidences just, just snowballing up and I kind of got the urge just to talk about it for a while, just to put it out there and, and get some other people's opinions and thoughts on this kind of stuff because I was a little bit, I, I was on the edge of fixating on it. And I get impulse control problems sometimes when that happens. Maybe I'll make another video about the impulse control problem I had once upon a time where I was talking to my then girlfriend about um, leg waxing. Would you like to hear the leg waxing story? <laughs> Whew. 
Thanks to the Patreons scrolling above there. I am Blunty. Thank you very much for making it to the end of the video. And I will catch you next time.